Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about the French parenting style. I'm sure none of you will have figured it out because I have a perfectly British accent, right? Uh, but I am originally from France. I currently live in the UK but I was born in Paris and I grew up in France and I was raised by a French mother. And so um, it's funny because now that I have kids and I live here in the UK and uh, I spend a lot of my life, you know, outside of France, I'm realizing how different the, pro the French approach is to, you know, the British or American approach to parenting. And of course, in France, just like anywhere else in the world, there's a wide variety of approaches. Everyone has their own different parenting styles and not all French people are the same or do things the same way. But definitely there are some things that are really staples, I guess, of French culture and French approach to parenting that we pretty much all have in common, even though we may implement it in varying degrees. So this is what I'm going to share with you today. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Soraya. I'm a mother of two beautiful children. And here on this channel, I talk about mindful parenting, children empowerment, and social emotional learning. I would love for you to subscribe. Please make sure you hit that notification bell so that you never miss one of my videos. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that I want to talk about is food. I've lived in the US for uh, five years. I was four years in New York and one year in Los Angeles and I've lived in the UK for a little over six years now. And so one of the biggest difference that always strikes me is our approach to food. Uh, and especially when it comes to parenting. And by the way, I don't want to make you feel like I'm putting everyone in the same bag that, you know, British culture is the same as American culture. Not at all. They're all different. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I'm just comparing the French approach with everybody else and what's different, you know, what's very specific to France that we do. Um, and I know that Americans and British people do things differently between themselves. Most of you will have heard about French cuisine. It's very well known. Uh, but I would say that when it comes to food in France, it's not only about what we eat, it's also about how we eat. Um, and so this uh, you know, has a very big impact on how we raise our children uh, and how we teach our children to eat. Uh, and I'm going to talk about what we eat and then I'm going to talk about how we eat. So what we eat. So from the moment we start weaning our children, um, <coughs> we get them used to eating the same thing as the parents eat. Um, and here in the UK, I see a lot of my friends, they cook either cook two meals, so they will cook one kid's menu, so children's food for their children, and a menu for adults, um, so they'll cook two different meals at every single meal time. Or I have friends who only cook one meal, but that will be the kid's menu, and so the parents have to restrict their diet to whatever the kids will eat. In France, it's a completely different approach. It's the completely the other way around. We expect our children to adapt to what we eat and to learn to appreciate the flavors that we enjoy as a family. And we teach them to appreciate those flavors by constantly, um, you know, getting them to eat those different things that we like to eat. So when we have kids, we don't restrict our diet at all. We expose our children to a very wide variety of food and to this very diverse diet. Uh, and, uh, you know, you will always hear French parents telling your children you can't say that you don't like something if you haven't tried it. This is something that I heard all the time as a child. And now that I'm a mother, this is something that I find myself saying all the time. You can't say you don't like it if you haven't tried it. So we expect our children to try everything. It's part of educating them to enjoy all of these different kinds of food. And because food is so important to us, because we have such a big culinary tradition uh, and because French cuisine is, you know, it's such a big part of our culture. Uh, it's really important for us to teach our children what we call bon goût, good taste. We teach our children to enjoy those flavors, to enjoy complex flavors from a very, very early age. And so this very big difference between how we approach food actually is a big problem for me in the UK. <laughs> because first of all, whenever we go to a restaurant, I hate 
the kids' menus in restaurants here in the UK. Um, most restaurants, in the kids' menu, you will find three options. You will find pasta, pizza, or uh, chicken nuggets and fries, or chips, like they call it here in the UK. And for me, this is so annoying. That's not what I want to see on a kid's menu. What I want to see on a kid's menu is the same thing that I'm eating, except a smaller portion, because my child doesn't eat as much as I eat. Um, but I don't want to go to a nice restaurant where we all sit down and have this nice meal for her to eat uh, chicken nuggets and fries. If I want her to eat chicken nuggets and fries, I'll go to McDonald's. I don't go to a nice restaurant. Why do I get to enjoy a really nice meal at a restaurant and her experience of a restaurant is pasta or uh, chicken nuggets and fries? And the other thing is the menus that are being served to children in childcare facilities. Um, and I don't know if it's the same for schools because none of my children attend school, uh, but it's definitely like that for nurseries here in the UK. Um, I remember that when I looked for a nursery for my daughter, at the time my son wasn't born yet, uh, I visited 14 different nurseries and every time I was so frustrated with the menu. In France, when, we, when you take your child to nursery or to primary school, your child will always be served a four course meals. We start with either a salad or what we call crudité, so that's raw vegetables uh, like raw cabbage or raw carrots. And then uh, you have a hot main course uh, again, like with usually a protein and vegetables and stuff like that and carbs and stuff like that. And then you have a dairy product, so a yogurt or a piece of cheese. And then you have fruits. And this is completely normal. Even for very young children, this is what we give them to eat at home and at nursery and at school. And this is what we expect. I've actually had some friends uh, come over to my house and be really surprised by you know, by that, by how many courses I'm giving my kids in a meal and telling me, oh, but that's too much food, isn't it? And I told them no, because my child doesn't eat more than your child in quantity, uh, but it's just that we eat a little bit of everything, children and adults. Now, moving on to how we eat, because, you know, uh, as much as I care about what my kids eat, I also care a lot about how we eat it, because this is so important in French, cu in French culture. Um, so so the first thing is that we eat together as a family. Eating is a way of connecting for us. And so this idea of the family mealtime is very, very, very important in French culture. Um, so you won't see children eating first and then the parents eating later in the evening. Like I, I think that here in the UK, a lot of parents do that. At least I hear a lot of my friends um, who do that, who will have their children have their dinner first earlier. And then maybe once the kids are in bed, they have dinner with their partner. This is not how we do things in France. It's so important for us to eat all together. Another thing that is very, very French, I guess, is that we are very big on manners and etiquette in France. So we expect children to be very respectful towards adults, but also adults are very respectful towards children. I will have to say, nothing annoys me more than when an adult interrupts my children. I teach my children not to interrupt others, not to interrupt each other, not to interrupt other children, and not to interrupt adults. My children know, my son, he's still learning, he's 18 months old, but my daughter, who is three and a half years old, she knows that when I am talking to somebody, she's got to wait until I finish talking before she can interrupt us to ask me for something. And she cannot cut us in the middle of a sentence or start calling my name while I'm talking with my friends or with another adult. She already knows this. So if my three and a half years old can do it, why can't an adult do it as well? And I feel like my daughter des deserves the same amount of respect as you or me or any other adult. And so when she is talking to me, I don't like when somebody interrupts her to talk to me. And when she is talking to another adult, I don't like when suddenly they want to say something to me and they s interrupt my daughter to turn to me to start talking to me. I'm like, oh, wait, she was talking to you. <laughs> Can you finish listening to her and, you know, she's a full person, she's there and uh, right now she's feeling completely disrespected and ignored. It's not a very nice thing. Children have feelings too. <laughs> Children don't like being interrupted either. So 
this I think is a very French thing. It's really both ways. Which leads me to the next point and it's how much French people value patience. We really value patience and we teach our children to be patient. I think that wait is the word that I use most <laughs> every single day, so many times. I am teaching my children to wait. I am teaching my children that when I'm doing something, unless they're in danger, unless they're in pain, unless there is an emergency, but if there isn't an emergency, they can sit with their discomfort a couple of minutes while I finish what I'm doing before I come and tend to them. And this is really important to me and this is really important to French people in general and to French parents. And this is key in French parenting. We teach our children patience and we really, really value patience. Actually, we even tell our children to be sage and the word sage in English can be translated as wise. We ask our children to be wise and wise meaning being able to understand that, you know, there are some other things going on. You're not the center of the universe and you've got to wait five minutes until your parent is ready to tend to you. And so, you know, waiting for your turn to speak so you don't interrupt others, you wait. And even if you need something, you wait. Um, waiting when you need something from your parent but they're busy like I'm doing the dishes you wait until I finish doing the dishes and then I will tend to you and so I can I think that this goes into the spirit that from a very young age we want to teach children that being their parent is not the only thing that we are and so in France there is a lot less guilt for example about returning to work very early in fact it's very common to go back to work after like three four months so when your child is like three or four uh, or four months old it's very very common to go back to work we have um, child care provided by the government and paid for by the government like we pay in a little bit but the, how much we pay in is calculated depending on our revenues so some people who have a low income they might be just paying a few cents per day um, so it can be like a ridiculously low amount of money that they contribute to for childcare, which means that childcare is accessible to basically everyone and uh, that a lot of mothers go back to work very quickly after giving birth, like within three to four months. And this is completely accepted and normal in France. Um, and even stay at home moms tend to still book a space in a nursery and send their child to nursery, even if just for a couple of hours a week because there's really this idea that it's totally normal for them to take a few hours to just self-care and relax or you know focus on whatever they want to do or whatever activity or hobby that they have even if they're stay-at-home moms we don't expect them to completely give up their life for their babies um, and there's very much this idea that the child is not at the center of everything and so i think this is something really big that we are teaching our children from a young age that they are not the center of everything we actually have a way of saying this uh, that we don't want our children to be enfant roi uh, which means the king child, which means that we don't want our children to be, to feel like they are the ones who are the most important in the family and that they are the center of our lives and that we don't exist outside of being their parents. And so I know that for my children, my children are very young. My son is 18 months old, my daughter is three and a half years old, but still, you know, for example, um, when I drink my coffee, I don't like being interrupted when I drink my coffee and I am teaching them. My daughter knows that if I'm drinking my coffee, she's going to have to wait uh, because I'm going to finish drinking my coffee before I do whatever it is that she needs me to do. So if she needs help, help with you know, whatever, taking a game out or if she wants to do an activity, she's going to have to wait until I finish my coffee. Uh, and I make her very aware of the fact that I have needs too. I feel like American moms and British moms are a lot have a lot more sacrificial approach to motherhood from what I'm observing this is nothing scientific it's just me looking around me and feeling that this is what I notice like they have a much more sacrificial approach than French women do <laughs> And the last thing that I found really interesting and that is so different between French culture and uh, English or American culture is that French people are totally fine with 
letting our children be bored. Uh, we don't feel like we have to um, schedule a ton of activities, organize, always have a lot of things planned for our kids to do. Um, we are really fine with our children being bored a little bit. In fact, in France, you will often say people. Uh, in fact, in France, you will often hear people say that boredom is healthy and that boredom is good for children's brain development and that boredom breeds uh, creativity. And this is something that I personally really believe um, and I don't believe in overstimulating children and a lot of time I will not provide my child with a ready-made activity and I will expect her to go and decide for herself what she wants to do and not only does this encourage her to play independently which means that my three and a half years old is completely capable of playing by herself for like 45 minutes and entertain herself and just play on her own uh, but also also, I think that it gets her to be more creative because then she has to find a way to entertain herself. So uh, we definitely don't believe in filling the day up because sometimes I see that parents uh, if they don't have a planned activity, one, they may feel super, super guilty about not having a huge amount of activities planned for their child and two, they will try and fill up the empty space with things like TV and screen time and for me no you don't have to use screen time to fill up that empty space you can also let your child entertain themselves and find ways to you know do play independently on their own without necessarily needing something an adult or a device to entertain them um, but this is a very French style <laughs> of, uh, of seeing education I guess Please do let me know in the comments below what you think of the French approach to parenting, if some things you think are similar to your approach or how different it is from your culture and the way you know parents approach parenting in your culture. I would love to know. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye.